Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. I, uh, I looked at all the headlines today. There's a lot going on. The world condemns Israel after the peace ship incident. Judge in Connecticut, town can't hold graduations in a church. Spain credit downgraded. House extends unemployment benefits on Friday. Did you even know that? The FTC has a new policy to save journalism. Oh, that's an incredible story. Meanwhile, uh, Michigan is considering a law to license journalists. Fears rise in Europe over potential deflation. Ben Scott, formerly of Free Press, gets a job at the State Department. Some of these things are so vitally important. But that's not really the story of America. The story of America is so far beyond the headlines. And that's where we need to go today, because we are a nation divided. And we can talk about the news, and we can talk about politics, but until we find the things that unite us, we're in trouble, and we'll close the book on the story of America. So let's make sure that page is open to the right page. I'll share it next. Hello, America. I want to talk to you about something that... <laughs> There isn't a TV executive or consultant or a PR person or an attorney or anybody that is in their right mind that would advise me to do. But it has to be done. It's counterintuitive for me to bring this up, especially if you know the way the press works. Um, it was a three-day weekend. If you want to bury a story, and that's why, what is it, uh, uh, the uh, item number eight or item number five, the FTC come out with a report on how to save journalism. They, they released it on a Friday. It's called a story dump. If you want to bury something, you release it on a Friday afternoon because nobody reads it. They don't read the newspapers. But if you really want to bury something, you release it on a Friday of a holiday weekend because then everybody forgets about everything. Times are changing. Times are changing, and because of that, so must we. I want to talk to you about something that happened last Friday to me. Um, last Friday on my radio program, I was doing what I always do, and that is, um, you know, I talk about the news and we joke around and everything else. And I was ridiculing the president for his constant use of children as a tactic to further his agenda or to shield himself. Um, he, he told a story in the press conference last week where his daughter said, Daddy, have you plugged the hole yet? I was making fun of the president, but no, I wasn't. Not really. Not really. I was making fun of the president, but I also broke my own rules. I brought his children and his family into it. And I didn't even realize it at the time. I really didn't. And I could tell you right now that I, well, I was misinterpreted. Uh, it was poorly handled, or I, I misspoke, or you misheard, or whatever the excuse is. I could use the Republican, Democrat, you know, double trouble speak. You know, look, let me be clear. Uh, the point I was making is, and then fill out the blank. That's what everybody does. That can't happen anymore. Times have changed, and so must we. I told myself, and I actually believed it for a while, I told myself about a, for about an hour after I got off the air, um, well, I wasn't making fun of the kids, and I believed it. But then something happened. And I have to share this with you because, as I found out later that night, um, I'm supposed to learn from my mistakes, and we're supposed to talk about things because there's something powerfully destructive in our country right now. I honestly didn't think I was making fun of his children. But then my wife came home. And I don't know about your wife, but my wife could speak to me in the softest tones. And um, she always does. And she always, she always ends up being right. And it gets under your skin, you know what I'm saying? Well, I get off the radio, and it's about an hour after it, and my wife said, I heard your show today. Why would you make fun? of the president's children in something that honestly took me by surprise I snapped at her I mean 
Where did that come from? She didn't ask me that question, but I saw it in her eyes. I snapped at her. I said, I wasn't making fun of his children. And I know that's the way they're going to spin it. And I, I know you don't understand the media cabal that's out there. And I watch these people. And I don't swear. I swore. I said, you don't look at these expletive people. I have to look at them every day and their actions. I know who they are. My gosh, I was, I was a monster. And it took me by surprise, but I played it like, cool, what? What? My wife didn't respond. She's smarter than I am. She just looked at me and said, I, I understand. Then she followed it with, I think you might need a nap. Um, she did understand. I just wasn't ready to admit it to myself yet. She left the room and I immediately um, issued an apology because she was right. I said a prayer. I got a nap in. And then I went downstairs and I apologized to my wife. I said, honey, you are right. And there is absolutely no excuse or reason to ever, 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 ever even come close to the line of dragging somebody's family into the debate. I, I've never done it. I've never done it until last Friday. And I hope that's my bottom. So all Friday, I'm thinking about this. How did I, where, where did that come from? Where did that come from? I think I have an answer. I don't have an excuse, but I have an answer. And I share it with you tonight because I think it leads me to, to something that I think is important for all of us. It doesn't matter what side of the aisle. You, you, you can hate my guts. It doesn't matter. I think this is something that we have to talk about. Again, it doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on. I think sometimes we can feel pretty alone. I think especially because, uh, look, if you're Barack Obama, you're watching me, and you're seeing me on TV, you, you can't tell me that he doesn't look at times and just snap and blow a gasket on what I'm saying. Because we fundamentally disagree with each other. He sees the world in a different way. Same with you, same with me. We see, or we're beginning to see, the destruction of our country and our parties and our political system, our whole system, all of it, has been built to point the finger at each other. And in the past, that's been used and people win elections that way. But now we're into something completely different. I don't, I don't think you and I are that different. I mean, we gather here at 5 o'clock every day to try to figure out what's going on in our country. We honestly, if you're like me, you wonder, how is it that nobody else sees this? <laughs> you know, how is it? Why aren't my neighbors awake? I, I went to a Memorial Day parade in this little town um, that I live in, in Connecticut yesterday. And, I mean, it's the kind where, you know, it's a flatbed truck or a little back of a pickup truck, and there's like three veterans in lawn chairs in the back, and they wave, and we all clap, and... Um, as I was leaving, a guy who was sitting next to me said, I don't know what's happening to our country, and I don't know why people aren't waking up. And I said, I don't either. I don't either, but, but a lot of people are waking up. And he said, I, I hope so. We talked about, I think this is the way maybe our grandparents might have felt, I don't know, 1936? You know, they knew something was about to change, but you didn't know what. And you didn't know how it was going to end. Honestly, when I started this program, and I've told you this before, I thought others in the media would join me if I could just back up my arguments and have a good track record of being right on the things that I say were coming. Well, I've done that. And still the media remains silent. I, I, I'm guessing you've done that too, and you thought your neighbors or your family members would wake up, and now you look at them and you're like, what, what, are, you, what, what, what are you even thinking? How do you not see this? I'm not sure, the members of the media, I don't even know if they even watch anymore. They may have just convinced themselves that there's nothing but a show there, nothing to see, just move on, you move on. There's a guy who's just greedy and wants to make money. I got news for you. There are easier ways to make money than what I do here every night. There are. Do you, do you want to be the person spreading the message? Do you want to be the person in your family that's like, why are you hating everybody? It's a lot easier to not be called a hater every day. What's your motivation for watching the show? 
Wouldn't you gladly give it up? Gladly. If you could be wrong, wouldn't you just, wouldn't you, wouldn't you rather just go back to, you know, eating Cheetos every day? I would. I just fear that I'm not wrong. All right, so last week I noticed something that was happening, but it didn't see, it felt good when it was happening. Every day that I was walking out of the studio or walking home, somebody had viciously reached out. They felt it was their duty to call me every name you could imagine under the sun. Usually I don't really care. 